Hello and welcome to Shay Spills Podcast. I am your host, Shilan, aka Shay. Hi. Um, this episode today is about soccer again, but it's about women's football. And uh, currently, um, there is a big lawsuit case on with US Women's National Soccer Team of equal pay and I thought we could talk about it and um, other things about women's sports of equal payment and other discrimination things that are happening in sports that people wouldn't be aware of so I thought we'll talk about that and yeah that's it all right hope you guys enjoy this podcast episode and let's get to it so what's equal pay it means Men and women on the same employment performing equal work must receive equal pay. A certain Equality Act in 2010. It's the law. Period. If you're an employer, you must observe it. This applies not only to the salary, but also the terms and conditions of an employment, such as holiday entitlement, bonuses, pay and reward schemes, pension payments and other benefits. On March 8, in 2019, on Women's International Day, the US Women's National Soccer Team filed a lawsuit against the US Soccer Federation to a district court in LA for gender discrimination. The team claims being treated differently on the basis of gender affecting their paychecks, facilities including for the medical team, have been treated. In 2016, five members of the previous team filed complaints with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. Now, fast forward to one year later, on May 1st, in 2020, the District Court dismissed the terms unequal and discrimination pay claim. However, pursuing the players' claims on unequal treatment, a trial will begin on June 16th of this month. Now, with all that happening, sorry for the pages being flicked, um, the judge who was in the matter of that dismissal, Judge R. Gary Costner of the United States District Court for the Central District of California, he granted the US Federation motions for summary of judgment. He dismissed the players' argument that they were systematically underpaid by the US Soccer Federation to the comparison of the men's national team. To him, the soccer Federation claims that the women's team had earned more than the men's team during the years of the issues that were during the lawsuit. The former president of the Federation, Carlos Cardio, who um, he resigned in March um, after the criticism over the women's equal pay lawsuit. Um, to make it more easier on you and me to explain about the differences of the payments of the men and women. Uh, I'm going to use a short clip from the Washington Post explaining this um, and I hope you enjoy it. The vast majority of revenue for the US Soccer Federation comes from two places, games played by both national teams and sponsorships. Since fiscal 2016, ticket sales for the women's games have not only matched but have brought in more overall revenue than the men's games. And even though the games can be expensive to put on, the women generated more net revenue for games in 2016 and 2017. Sponsors have also been giving more since the US won the 2015 Women's World Cup. But we can't directly attribute that increase to either team, since the Federation doesn't distinguish which team brings in more sponsorship or how sponsorship dollars are allocated. The players' earnings are determined by a mix of factors that differ between the men's team and women's team, making a direct comparison almost impossible. The women's team makes a base salary and has bonuses. The men's team only earns bonuses. The teams play different numbers of games and earn different bonuses depending on the outcome of a game and the rank of their opponent. The lawsuit alleges that if both teams played 20 friendly games, that a top tier women's national player would earn 38% of the compensation of a similarly situated player on the men's team. But that was under the previous collective bargaining agreement that ended in December of 2016. We obtained the new agreement, which took effect in April of 2017. And in the same scenario, we calculated that a player on the women's team would earn about 89% of the compensation of a similarly situated men's player. If both teams lost all 20 games, the players would make the same amount because men earn a $5,000 bonus when they lose. The women don't earn bonuses for losses, but they have a $100,000 base salary. 
2019, the men's team consistently had more expenses, which included salaries, than the women's team. But in 2018, the women earned more than the men on average. But they also won more and played almost double the games. And that's all before we get to the World Cup pay structures, which is set up entirely differently. Total prize money for the Women's World Cup in 2019 is 30 million. The champions will walk with about 4 million. In 2018, the Men's World Cup champions won 38 million. So there's no question that there's a huge gap in earning potential here. But it's important to understand how it works. FIFA sets up the amount and awards any prize money to the winning country's federation. The federation passes that onto the players. The huge disparity in World Cup prize money shows there's much less money in the women's game overall. And even though when it comes to revenue from ticket sales, the women's team holds its own against the men, the U.S. women's ability to make as much money or more than the men's team has traditionally required better, consistent performance. The new collective bargaining agreement does a lot to shrink the gap in payment for friendly games, but there is without question still a gap when the World Cup is included. All of these So here are some facts of differences of the US men's and the women's team. So the women are ranked number one currently in the world and have won four World Cups in 91, 99, 2015 and 2019. They have won four gold medals as well from 96, 2004, 2008 and 2012. The men. In the World Cup, they have qualified third place, and that was in 1930, and that was the same year they, that was their first entry of the World Cup. They didn't qualify in 2018's Russia um, World Cup, but they did qualify in 2014, and they placed 15th place. In the Olympics, they used the under-23 uh, team for the men's, and they didn't qualify in 2012 or 2016 either but they did qualify in 2018 and be placed in ninth place with that um with the us happening um with their lawsuit it announced in november uh in 2019 that australia would give the matildas um to earn the same pay as the men's in a landmark deal for gender equality and sport they will be afforded uh, not afforded sorry and um, they would be yeah no it's afforded sorry afforded into business class flights to international fixtures and tournaments in the, f the four-year deal the two teams will receive a 24 percent share revenues rising one percent each year and to be an increase from 30 to 40 percent in players to share prize money earned on qualifying for a world cup um, with inequality, of course, um, here are some other facts you might not know. So, yes, there is a growing interest of women's football currently, both club and international with the media coverage. Last year's match of England versus USA, which was broadcasted on two networks, it was on BBC, that got 10.3 million viewers watching the match and 7 million viewers in the USA on Fox. That was also nominated for a BAFTA award uh, this year um, for sport coverage, so hopefully fingers crossed they have a chance to win it. Um, but according to FIFA, they claim that over 30 million women play football globally. 5 million female players are registered for the National Association. 89% of women of footballers consider leaving the game early when they're looking for opportunities outside the sport with a low pay. Most players' salaries are less than $1,000 a month, earning a drop as players get older. The top five countries to adequately pay their players enough to cover their expensive expenses sorry, uh, from playing, including are Germany, Urkestan, if I can say that right, England, Sweden and the United States. But it's not just the pay is a problem for a crucial aspect of their work, including lack of constructual stability, agent support, absence of appropriate childcare as well. So that's unfortunate. 
and here at home in Ireland our football team of the women in 2017 they had a problem as well they um, had to announce a press conference um, with their association of Professional Football Association of Ireland had refused to rule a boycott for their match they were playing against Slovakia. 14 members of the senior team um, with officials of the union were at Liberty Hall for an event which they said that their various attempts over the last two years to have action taken to concerns over payments for loss of earnings and the general treatment of the squad had been to nothing. At the heart of the issue, it was repeatedly stressed that have been association's steadfast refusal to engage with the PFA, AI, sorry, despite the players making it internally clear that how they wish to proceed. Emma Byrne, who was the former captain at the time, described it as humiliating, humiliating, I can't even pronounce the word, I'm so sorry, humiliating, there we go, that have, players have to resort to airing their own grievance in public, but said that the situation in which various members of the squad were obliged to change in and out of the FAI track seats before and after trips away when they weren't allowed to keep the kit was unacceptable. Players are told if it was reported that the track suits were needed for use by underage teams. So just think about that. They're sharing their tracksuit pants and tracksuit jackets with other team players who are either younger than them. Um, like that's crazy to think that that happened in 2017 um it's a joke really to be honest um emma burns said we were we are fighting for equality we are fighting for the future of the women's football and they did um they did ask for 300 euro per player and payments to cover the expenses the fei had in return suggested that the significant proposals to make on financial side of things but they had indicated the players in a series of emails that they would only make them directly to squad members as they refused to allow the professional football association represent any national team where is the thing the fei have enough <laughs> problems with, them, with money they um financially are ask it was a nightmare with money and stuff at the moment so we won't go into that but just to think you know that happened with Ireland but you know I don't think many people really give a fudge about women's football as much as the men even though yes there is big coverage for the women's world cup and olympics of women's football but in between that you don't hear much unless something's horribly gone wrong or drama um I so I just put on youtube just to be curious I put women's football and here are the first five um suggestions that come up in the bar um number one shirt off number two fails number three bad number four is highlights and number five is england and you can tell who's the people who are going to be searching it it's majority men i'm not being sexist but like i think most of the time people just think we're a sex symbol even in football and we're not and it's disgusting to think like that um i am on also uh, a couple of facebook groups of football and when i was in i mean i'm an arsenal supporter if you don't know and um someone put it up on the facebook group about the what happened with in march uh, of the us's lawsuit case and the comments were all men and the way they were talking about it was like sickening like the way they were saying is that women don't deserve the, the payment you know they're not as good they're good in their gender they're number one i think they do deserve it if they're winning and doing improvement of skills and you know and they're bringing a lot of income and in, not just for the federation but themselves you know and bring such fan base let them um and obviously not to them not to the, to the comments who were oh it's just I didn't bother reading any more of them because they were just disgusting <laughs> what I mean not disgusting is just um 
if I got into a comment war with them, it would end fairly messy. Uh, I'm gonna play a clip from um, Leanne Sanderson and Michelle Heyman, who are two footballers. Uh, Leanne um, played for England um, and was playing uh, last year with Juventus. She was previously playing with West New York Flash and Orlando Pride in Arsenal a couple of times. Um, she has talked about um, inequality quite a lot. Um, she said in 2010 she um, complained under unfair treatment and declared that she would not play for England again under the coach of Hope Powell at the time. After Mark Sampson took over uh, in 2013 she recalled to the, to the squad and she play, uh, played in the Women's World Cup in 2015 but she had made further complaints of unfair treatment and was not selected in 2015 um she did leave Juventus uh, only playing one season um in 2019 but I, for no reasons we do not know why um which seems interesting um yeah and Mich uh, Michelle Heyman is a uh, place for Australia so here they are talking about um in quality of women's football um i'm not sure what network this is but um it's definitely from america just around the same time as the world cup so here they are there's an element of fear amongst a lot of players and i think i totally understand that sometimes but i've not been raised to kind of have that sense of fear and you know if i think something's not correct then i'm going to certainly speak to somebody in the right way in the correct way so, you know it's not about having sh having shouting from the rooftops but if something's not correct then you should do something about it. And as we've seen, you know, sometimes teammates don't back what you're saying, and that's okay. And it just happens all the time because even um, if you look at Australia a few years ago, we had to go on strike just to get a little bit more pay. And I'm like, this is something that constantly happens within mm -hmm. women, women's sport. I'm like, more countries have done it. America's done it. Everyone's kind of had to go on strike just to be able to get their opinion out there. And you have to do it as a team sometimes because you get scared, you get nervous to be able to stand out and have your own opinion and have that conversation without feeling either one you could get bullied throughout your team or people might not like you having an opinion so it's just kind of like this this up and down kind of situation like if you do speak out you might regret it or yes so um thank you for listening to the podcast episode um i hope you enjoyed it and learned a little bit more about uh, the inequalities of women's football uh, and maybe support it a bit more um, go and follow all players if you can on social media if you are running or watch them on YouTube um, there's a load of football matches up online um, during quarantine anyway you could watch and relive football um, it's still unsure when football will be back on for women um, I do know in the UK they um, finished the seasons of um, the leagues uh, announcing who already won so Chelsea won um, despite my bitterness of them I don't support them I support Arsenal which came third which wasn't too bad um, but Chelsea and Manchester City will be qualifying for the Champions League whenever would that happen um, along with that uh, I might do another podcast on what's going to happen with the Euros with the women's because this summer it's June now it would have been the men's Euros um, but that has been moved to next summer and technically next summer was supposed to be the women's um so would that mean it would be moved to 2023 no 2022 sorry not 2023 gosh um um yeah uh before i leave i wanted to play a clip of alex morgan who was on good morning america with megan rapone um just thanking the fans just want to put that little small clip in to end the podcast sweetly hopefully so mind yourselves i'll see you guys all soon and uh see you guys later but we just thank our fans so much for supporting us um all the sponsors that have supported us and um this is definitely a hurdle in the road but it's nothing that's gonna stop or deter us from um from what we have always uh, been true to and that's true equality within the sport um, so we are still feeling optimistic um, and we'll get through this. Yeah.